So good uh, afternoon or good morning or good evening. Depende kung ano sa mga oras na katuon ka ron. But anyway, um, welcome to our another topic here in our subject microbiology. So this day's topic is titled the microbes. So we are now in topic number two. So again, this is uh, <coughs> Edward Lorenzo Pena, your course instructor for the said subject. Okay, so we now go to topic number two. Okay, so in topic one, we learned the scopes of the said subjects. And this subject, we know the nature of different groups of microorganisms, including its benefits and dangers to our society, particularly our, our health. Okay, so remember that there are more um, benefits that you can get from microorganisms than, they, than the threats that they impose sa society okay only that uh, those small percentage there are only at least there's at least uh three percent of the total known microorganisms that are said to be disease causing pa pathogenic okay so that's where we we need to uh, understand especially ang ihang impact sa ang health okay mo na ang pangandaman okay so uh, in this topic we are going to discuss the different characters of different groups of microbes we also have to identify the important molecules and structures that operate within microbial cells and of course you have to discuss the contributions and threats of microorganisms to our society okay so let's go first to bar uh, bacteria and archaea okay so you have to consider that there are more uh, microorganisms in your body than there are body cells in your body Okay, so redundancy na. So, mas daghan pa ang mga microorganisms nga nasa tong lawas then there are cells that made up our body. Okay, so in your intestine alone, there are approximately uh, 1,100 different species of microorganisms that covers bacteria, mostly bacteria and of course, some fungi. And remember that uh, these microorganisms that are in our body, that are part of our body, have contributed to our overall health, for example, in digestion and nutrient production. Okay? So, in our mouth, there are uh, a good number of microorganisms in our mouth. That's why when we go to sleep, uh, they try to uh, repopulate. Okay? And there are these, these groups of uh, microorganisms in our mouth, Okay, they try to produce certain vitamins. Okay, I think it's vitamin K, if I, if I am not mistaken. Okay, so in, in small quantities, they can actually provide us with some nutrients. Okay, so with these microorganisms in our intestines, diba? we have this uh, Yakult drink. Okay, I'm not promoting Yakult, but uh, this Yakult drink, or similar drinks contain microorganisms that when we consume these products it will aid in the proper digestion okay sa ato ang kinaon okay so remember nga whether we like it or not there will always be microorganisms in our body okay and at the same time these microorganisms protect us help nourish us and of course allow our existence so without microorganisms in our body Okay, we cannot we can survive. Okay, so uh, what else? So these prokaryotes, uh, uh, bacteria and archaea, they are different from eukaryotes in several aspects. First is the DNA packaging. Okay, so prokaryotes do not have nucleus. Okay, so we know that um, nucleus is a large organelle in eukaryotic cells uh, that protects the the dna okay so in the case of prokaryotes they don't have nucleus that's why um this nucleus i mean the dna or the genetic material inside a prokaryotic cell is well within the cytoplasm okay what else so the cell wall Cell wall and prokaryotes differ in molecular composition. Okay, so there are additional materials in prokaryotes that are not found in eukaryotic cells. 
Okay, what else? So, internal structures, prokaryotes have lesser internal structures. So, take note that the only known um, organelle found in prokaryotic cells are this what we call ribosomes. So, wala na ilain na itong makita. Okay, so only ribosomes. Okay, so what else? So, in figure 2.1, you can see there the basic structure of a prokaryotic cell. So, you have there the circular chromosome. And one of the difference is that um, unlike sa kanigitaw ng eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells contain only one, C, uh, one circular chromosome. Take note that it is circular chromosome. Unlike um, in eukaryotic cells where the chromosomes are linear. Okay, so in figure 2.2, take a look at that one. So, microorganisms, particularly bacteria and eukarya, can come in different shapes and forms. So, you have there the cocos, which means the spherical shape uh, cells, okay, which can also come in different arrangement. You have the diplococci, you have the uh, streptococci. When you say strepto, uh, they are in chain like appearance. Sarcinae in tetrads, meaning to say uh, they occur in fours, and of course you have the staphylococci, which uh, resembles uh, a clustered grapes. We also have bacilli or bacillus in singular, which are radish-shaped uh, microorganisms. So it could appear as sing uh, singular uh, appearance, or it can form uh, in a chain like uh, manner so, uh, for example the streptobacilli uh, group and of course we have the spirochetes okay the those kanang uh, murasyag screw okay and the vibrios uh, similar to a comma okay so there are also those who resembles uh, similar uh, or in the middle bit the middle uh nga uh, siya murasyag hybrid uh, sa kokai and basilai. So, we call this, those one as the cocobacillus uh, or cocobacillai. Okay? So, uh, that's in figure 2.2. You can see there the different shapes and arrangements of uh, prokaryotic cells. Now, take note there are still other structures and forms na ato ang pwedeng ma-attribute ma sa um, prokaryotic cells. Okay, so let's go now to some of the structures that we can find in a prokaryotic cell. So, the first thing here is in your in page 3, that's the flagella or flagellum in singular. So, flagella are structures that allow bacteria to move from one point to another. Okay, so its movement is similar to a rotor in motor boats and that's circular. So, bacterial flagellum is made up of at least 30 different proteins. So, take note that not all microorganisms have flagella, okay? But uh, there are those uh, who possess uh, such structure, okay? So, uh, the movement of, take note that the movement of this uh, flagellum is not uh, like a whip, W-H-I-P, kanang latigo or bunal, okay? So, dili siya hinana movement, but the movement is circular, uh, that's comparable to uh, rotors kanitang mga palabad okay, sa motorboats or choppers, so circular ang iyahang movements, and of course this is one of the things that can puzzle um, evolutionary view because uh, microorganisms the, this uh, flagellum contains 30 different proteins where in fact the, the absence of one protein will not form a flagellum okay so that's in figure 2.3 you can see there the different proteins that made up the bacterial flagellum so uh, it's actually highly precise and accurately arranged in a bacterial cell and in figure 2.4 you can see there that some microorganisms have different flagellar arrangements so you have there the monotricos uh, isara ang iyahang flagellum the amphitricos tagsa lang siya however um, it's at the opposite end lophotricos there are several flagella in a cell however it is clustered 
in a certain point and of course you have the petriticus petriticus <coughs> um, whose flagellum can be found all over the cell okay so there are also those bacterial structure that you can find we have the axial filament okay so this is now the internal flagellum enclosed between cell wall and cell membrane and they are found in spirochetes okay so take a look at in figure 2.5 okay it serves as a mini muscle okay others are actually considering this as the muscle of the spirochetes this axial uh, filament uh, pilos or pili and fimbriae are structures for attachment to surfaces now um, this pilos and fimbriae adds pathogenicity that may lead to the development of new antibiotics so when you say pathogenicity um, the degree of the disease caused by this microorganism so this is one of the factors that we can we can uh, consider when we study the bacterial's um, capacity to cause disease okay what else it allowed the formation of biofilm okay and at the same time it transfers genetic materials especially plasmids from one cell to another okay so kining pili or pilos that's what we call uh, the quote-unquote sex organ of microorganisms however they take note that they they do not uh, perform sexual intercourse however there is this what we call conjugation now the conjugation is the process where a bacterium Okay, transfers its plasmid okay take note that plasmids are extra chromosomal dna they they are actually made up of dna okay at the same time circular but it's too small it's smaller than the main genome of the of the bacterial cell okay so this plasmid can be transferred from one organism to the other you can see it in figure 2.6 okay take a look at the extended pilos okay muran shag straw beta hollow ang iyahang tunga and then that's enough the diameter of this pilos okay that attaches to another cell is enough for the plasmid to be transferred from uh, one cell to another okay so once the uh, there is this transfer take a look at this pilos it, it extends its um, length until such time that it anchors uh, to another to another cell okay so what is the result of this bacterial conjugation so when you talk about bacterial conjugation it may result to the formation of new structures in recipient cells because if ever mangod nga for instance can mean donor cell the thing nga nakapahimo niya og, or the thing that nga nakapahimo niya nga pathogenic is the presence of uh, these genes that can be found in the plasmids okay however when it transfers its plasmid kaning pathogenic na bacterium is iyahang it transfer ang iyahang plasmid okay which contains the genes for pathogenicity iyang it transfer nito sa non pathogenic nga strain by the time nga ang kaning recipient nga cell will receive the plasmid it will later on become pathogenic okay kay mao na siya because na ana siya gene for pathogenicity okay so it can result to the formation of new structure in recipient cells okay another structure here is we have the s layer okay it is also known as the cellular armor why because it is a chain mail of a single protein so when we talk about chain mail i don't know if you are familiar with some uh, medieval movies katong mga knights okay sa ilahang chest or naan na slice all ubon nga there is this one layer of kanang chain metal metallic uh, chain that can actually protect them from from attacks okay so malasan ang ilahang injuries that is the same uh, with um, s layer this is the same with s layer okay so it is the armor of a bacterium okay so armor here yeah, it's actually a chain mail uh, that is made up of a single layer of protein or a single protein okay so what else um, it is only produced only when uh, the bacteria is in hostile environment okay so it is just uh, a response to the threats 
uh, it is a response to the threats um, in the environment where this cell is situated okay so example for those bacteria the example bacteria uh, example for those bacteria who are producing S layers are the Clostridium difficile and Bacillus anthracis and they can also aid in attachment so that's the S layer or the cellular armor so in the case another uh, another structure here is we have the glycocalyx the glycocalyx is uh, described as the coating of repeating polysaccharide units okay so repeating polysaccharide units um, that may or may not include protein so when you say polysaccharide so it is mainly made up of sugar molecules okay so it may also um, it may also um, form complexes okay it may also form complexes with proteins okay so its main um, its main function is for the cellular protection and adhesion okay so that's the glycocalyx and uh, the glycocalyx can be in two forms okay the first form is the slime layer so this is one type of glycocalyx the slime layer it protects cells from loss of nutrients and water okay so you cannot see yeah and then the second type is the capsule so the capsule are more tightly bound to cell okay so tightly bound to cell and it is at the same time it is denser and thicker okay so it can be found in cultures uh, using special staining and uh, capsulate cells tend to be more pathogenic because it can aid in uh, resisting some immunological actions of the body when when they are actually inside our body okay so that's the capsule and of course it contributes to biofilm formation okay so we can expect that those capsulated microorganisms tend to become uh, more pathogenic okay or the pathogenicity level of capsulated microorganisms are higher compared to those uh, strains that have um, or that those that do not have capsule in their cells okay so you can see the difference between a slime layer and a capsule in figure 2.8 and of course on the right side uh, that's the microscopic imagery okay you can see there the clear surroundings okay or the clearer vicinity um, in a cell uh, and that's actually a sign that the microorganism or the cell is capsulated okay so that's for the glycocalyx the next um, structure here is the cell wall okay so cell wall <coughs> when you talk about cell wall as what we have mentioned a, a while ago the cell walls in microorganisms differ that of those uh, from the plants okay so line line in the structure and of course the young composition okay so let's discuss the cell wall in microorganisms so the cell wall it determines the overall shape of a bacterium where in fact it uh, promotes uh, rigidity uh, of the cells okay so what else it is maintained by a peptidoglycan layer so when you say peptidoglycan layer it is a complex between sugar and protein okay that's the main composition of cell wall and uh, lysis or disintegration of cells may occur without the integrity of that peptidoglycan layer okay so uh, what makes um, the cell nga uh, intact siya is or kanang dili siya molais is because of the presence of cell wall Okay, so more siya og ka na bitong mogay siya ang main uh, reason why the cell is not uh, bursting. Okay, what else? So it allows the exchange of materials inside and outside the cell. So even though that it is thick, so it still allows the exchange of materials. Okay, what else? It is the target, the cell wall is also the target of some antibiotics such as penicillin and cephalosporins. Okay, so take note that uh, drugs, kaning mga uh, drugs are designed to to dismantle the molecular structure or the structures of the cells. Okay, so 
um, the action of the antibiotic penicillin is that it actually destroys <coughs> the cell wall. So once the cell wall is destroyed, so the cell is prone to lysis. Okay, so it can either be gram positive or gram negative. So depending on the uh, thickness and the composition, molecular composi composition, microorganisms can be differentiated whether it is gram positive or gram negative. Okay, so there are also interesting cases of microorganisms that lack cell wall, for instance, the mycoplasmas. Okay, the mycoplasmas are uh, one of the smallest groups of microorganisms or bacterial cells. Okay, so mycoplasmas lack cell walls. So, uh, too much exposure sa kanin yahang environment, uh, it might cause the lysis uh, among mycoplasmas. So, they, they found a way nga ngitas lang paagi nga dili sila mo lice. Okay, so what happened is that uh, they have these sterols. So, instead of cell walls, they have sterols. Uh, na nag-stabilize sa ilahang the integrity of the cell and these sterols are resistant to lysis. So, this is a type of pleomorphic cells because they are known to be extremely small. So, as what I mentioned earlier, mycoplasmas are one of the groups that are the smallest in the microbial world. Okay, so let's take a look at figure 2.9. Molecular structure of the cell wall maintained primarily by sugar and protein. Okay, so that's the molecular structure of the cell wall. And in figure 2.10, structural difference between gram-negative and gram-positive. So what differs between gram-positive and gram-negative is actually the thickness and the arrangement of the peptidoglycan. So peptidoglycan, again, uh, is a, it is mainly made up of protein and um, glucose so in uh, gram negative you would notice there that the peptidoglycan layer is thinner mas nipisia, compared to the cell wall of gram positive organism however in gram negative microbes you can see there that there is this additional layer of uh, plasma membrane so you have the the additional layer so mura siya na sandwich so, in between anang two phospholipid bilayers is you have the peptidoglycan. However, in gram-positive, you will notice there that the peptidoglycan layer is much, much thicker compared to that of the gram-negative microbes. Okay, so unlike sa kanin gram-negative na organisms, gram-positive microbes do not have extra uh, cellular membrane okay wala siya extracellular membrane so that's basically uh, the difference between uh, gram positive and gram negative so um, in in laboratories uh, when we do gram staining okay the thickness and the presence of this extra um, cellular membrane okay can actually trap um, stain uh, molecules kaning mga ink niya mga molecules niya so matrap niya so depending kung uh, unsay unsa na color either it is red or blue then we can determine uh, unsa na siya nga type sa microorganisms but anyway we will be discussing gram staining <coughs> later on sa atong activity okay so the internal structure of micro microorganisms so you have the, the cytoplasm this is now the gelatinous solution okay Gelatinous solution. So, this is now the site for several biochemical um, activities. And <coughs> the bulk uh, of this cytoplasm is water. So, that's around 70 to 80 percent water. So, it is more of water. Okay. So, more show gelatin. Okay. What else? So, it contains cellular internal structures such as ribosomes, DNA, granules, fibers, etc. So, basically... Cytoplasm is everything that is within the cell. Okay, so kung asa siya, kung asa nag-float ang kaning mga molecules, okay, asa nag-float ang mga molecules and kaning mga ribosomes, basically that is cytoplasm. So this is the internal environment of the cell. Okay, so kanin siya, so daghan siya og, um, ito na, makita na ito, mga structures and molecules okay so 
in figure 2.11 you can see there the bacterial cytoplasm kita tana okay kanang dark ka ayong uh, naa sa outer nga part that's actually the cell wall okay and everything in the cell okay 70 uh, everything in this inside of the cell is actually made up of cytoplasm so makita na tong homo kayo water is here so all of the biochemical nga reactions in a cell are actually situated in that in that uh, location of the cell so most bacteria possess one circular chromosome okay so it is found in the region known as nucleoid okay so plasmids are extremely are extra chromosomal structures and they are transferred via conjugation that's what we discussed um, a while ago contain traits for resistance and other adaptive capabilities and they are subject for genetic engineering and of course can be integrated into the chromosome okay so moto ato ang dimension uh, ganiha nga these plasmids can actually produce new strains of microorganisms okay so plasmids are x chromosomal dna which are smaller than the main chromosome Okay, so let's go to ribosomes. So the ribosomes are the only known organelle in bacteria and they are for protein synthesis. Okay, maaragi na ang, ang organelle. So when you talk about organelle, these are membrane-bound um, structures in the cells. Okay, so we can also see inside the bacterial cell some inclusions or the inclusion bodies, which are the emergency, emergency kit of bacteria when nutrients and other inorganic materials are depleted. So, mura siyang nagbalon. Okay? So, yeah. so, can also for buoyancy, ATP and nucleic acid synthesis, and of course, orientation. Okay? So, kana siya. So, uh, that's the uh, inclusion body. So, cytoskeleton. So, when you talk about cytoskeleton, this, it adds to bacterial shape together with BP peptidoglycan layers okay so cytoskeleton from the word cyto which means cells and skeleton which means the foundation di ba kanang mga skeletal system di ba so inana siya so dili makatindog ang isa ka animal if or ang isa ka tao if walay bones okay so cytoskeleton this is actually a network of protein okay so figure 2.13 so there are other structures in the, a bacterial cell which includes ribosome and, of course, inclusion bodies. Okay, so let's go to endospores. So, endospores, it facilitates the survival of bacterial cells, especially in hostile environments. So, uh, we can consider, kanin uh, gitawag na to endospores, as kanin escape escape pods sa bacterial cell. So, um, dormant bodies produced by the genera Bacillus, Costium, and Sporong, uh, Sporos Sarsina. Okay, so what is the purpose of this endospore? Is that in case nga harsh na kayo ang environment, ganahan na mo, mo ikiyas ang isa ka cell. Okay, so kung harsh kayong mga environment, ganahan mo survive ang cell. So what happened here is that endospore will form. So ang endospore ang ihanggi siguro o um, uh, yung siguro o package yung tagoon is actually the genetic material okay so man siya pwede siyang dormant so there are two different phases of endospore formation first is the vegetative and the second one is the endospore the endospore itself so when you talk about vegetative nga, nga state it is metabolically active and growing in right conditions. So, in uh, the vegetative state, okay, this is where most uh, microorganisms din na sila mag, I mean, mona ilang state, vegetative state. Okay, so metabolically active, sige lang og uh, divide, and at the same time, uh, enough ang source sa nutrients sa yung environment. So, vegetative siya. So, it's actually more of a productive form. Okay, so it is induced uh, it is induced via spore or it induces a sporulation or the spore formation so spores in, enter into a resting condition okay so when you talk about endospores these endospores are characterized by shape position in cell size okay so it is medically important so there are also some medically important spores 
that are traced to be gram positive. Okay, so a bacterium produces only one endospore. Ang isa ka bacterium and it is not a reproductive function. Take note that it is not a reproductive function because endospores are more of a survival kit. Okay, survival kit na siya, katuwa kong gimension, more siya escape pod. So, in case nga harsh na kaayo ang environment, na deplete na ang mga nutrients, um, the cell itself, katong mga spore forming ang mga cells, is mo himo siya og, or mo produce siya o thick nga protein that will enclose the chromosome of the cell. Okay, just like what you can see in figure 2.14. So, makita na ito din ha, ng, uh, in different stages. Okay, if the cell can detect na uh, depleted na ang ilang resources, then it will duplicate ang ilang chromosome and then we'll produce the yon siya o uh, katong gitawag na ito uh, uh, pore kanang ilang membrane. Okay, and then mato magkadako ang ito nga ma-release siya. If ever nga mamatay na ang cell, katong cell itself, pero naaragi hapon ang endospore, so it can guarantee its survival. And endospores are said to be the hard, hardiest of all life forms. So mag, maglisod ka o patay aning endospore because it is capable of withstanding heat, pressure, radiation, freezing, and of course, uh, drying. Okay, so iyahan ang makasurvive siya in these parameters. Okay, so its survival is due to high calcium content and uh, dipocholinic acid. So, both dehydrates the cells. Okay, dehydrate niya. Okay, so ang ihang, ihang palibot. So, uh, take note that when cells enter into the endospore state, dili na siya patay ang cell. Okay, it is not dead. Where in fact, naagihapon siya yung metabolism, pero minimal na lang yung kaayo ang ihang metabolic ng mga activities. Okay. So, endospore has lower water content, making it resistant to dehydration and heat that can restore, destroy vegetative cells and its DNA. And further, endospores are metabolically inactive. Okay, so, it contains specialized hard spore coats that allow it to withstand radiation and chemicals. And time of inactivity, it's indefinite to immortality. So, ang endospore pwede siyang metabolic kali inactive nga thousand years okay or a hundred years or depende siya kung hangtod asa siya taman okay nga because by the time nga nga ang isa ka endospore kung depleted na siya na siya di ba na endospore na siya however kung ang if this endospore is situated in a nutrient rich environment it will start to germinate okay it will start to germinate. So, endospores are revitalized once conditions are favorable, specifically in the presence of water, amino acids, and in organic salts. Okay? So, it dissolves the coat and exposes the spore core, thus stimulating growth. And it germinates rapidly. So, even though nga, even though nga, nag spore na siya, metabolically active na siya for thousands of years, However, kung favorable lang yun ang iyang environment, it can germinate within one and a half hour. And once na maka-germinate na siya, then it will return to its vegetative cell phase. Where in fact, there are some interesting cases. Okay, there are interesting cases sa kanibitang mga mami sa Egypt. Okay, ang mga mami sa Egypt, some of them uh, naaslay na cultivate ng mga spores nga uh, found in the different uh, tissues sa mami and by the time nga ilahaning na detect ilahaning gi cultivate sa lab then ang katning mga spores nga nga gilubong and inactive siya for 2000 or 3000 years is that na regenerate na siya in, in just a couple of hours and then mato nga na culture niya pagwalik in in a lab, uh, laboratory Okay, so that's uh, bacteria. Let's go to archaea. So archaea, uh, they are anatomical and physiological and hereditary characteristics of archaea. Uh, greatly differs from bacteria. Hence, they were given a separate domain. So, before, uh, there are only 
two domains, you have the prokarya and eukarya, so the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. However, re- recent nga findings sa iyang hereditary nga content between archaea and bacteria, nakita nila nga there is this stark difference. That is why as of today, we now have the three domain system. So, we have now the eukarya, <coughs> the bacteria, and the archaea. So, the archaea, Ar- Archaeans are said to be they are said to be closer to eukaryotes than they are to bacteria and that is uh, yeah, in terms of hereditary uh, characteristics so mas closer ang archaea sa eukaryotes than they are to prokaryotes interesting no? <coughs> okay so it is believed to be the most primitive of all life forms and many uh, believe that they are formed in the primordial soup or the <coughs> environment um, nakatong sa ancient environment um, Archaeans they inhabit the most extreme environment so they are also known as extremophiles and there are Archaeans that are said to be methanogens that are mostly found in aquatic sediment where it converts carbon dioxide and uh, hydrogen into methane that can be used for fuel Okay, so kato siya methanogens, methanol, di ba katong, kato methane. Okay, halophiles, they grow in salty environments. Okay, so mga halophiles, uh, what else? The sacrophiles are found in freezing environments. So mga extremes, gini siya. Hyperthermophiles thrive in high temperatures and they were isolated from human tissues. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so you can see that the Archaeans, ang iyahag yung main characteristics is that they are thriving in extreme nga mga environments. So, in figure 2.15, you can see there the major differences between um, bacteria and archaea. So, bacteria have peptidoglycan in their cell wall, while archaeans do not have peptidoglycan in their cell wall. Archaeans have genes that are more similar to eukarya, and bacteria have genes that are different from eukarya. Okay, so that's the uh, prokaryotic uh, microbes, the bacteria and archaea. Okay, so <coughs> let's go to eukaryotic microbes. Okay, so when you talk about eukaryotic microbes, of course it contains um, nucleus and it has more organelles. Take note that uh, uh, unicellular eukaryotes always, they are Eukaryotes that are always unicellular are protists, and eukaryotes that are unicellular or multicellular are algae and fungi, and eukaryotes that are always multicellular are helminths. So we are now uh, we refer this to um, uh, katung mga helminths, katung mga worms. Okay, so micro microscopic ng mga worms. Okay, so let's go to the fungi, or by the way, and in figure 2.16, you can see there the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, so fungi, let's go first to the fungi. There are more than 100,000, ah, excuse me, okay, na akong baby. Ano siya man? Nag-classy pop-ups. Ano siya man, no? Okay, so back to the discussion. Sorry for that. Okay, so fungi, there are approximately 100,000 different species of fungi. And fungi are either macroscopic or microscopic. And in this subject, we are only dealing with uh, microscopic fungi. Okay, so fungi are either unicellular or colonial. Uh, microscopic fungi exist in two, in, in two morphological shapes. You have the yeast and the hyphae. Okay, so the hyphae are thread-like cells in filamentous fungi. Example for that are the molds. Okay, so thread-like cells. Na siya ay kanabitaw. Marasya og thread. Yeah, marasya og string. You can see that in figure 2.17. Ang ihang structure. Okay. What else? So the dimorphic fungi can also occur as yeast and hyphae. Okay, so... Fungi are heterotrophic and most fungi are saprobes, 
post nutrition uh, they derive their nutrition from decaying matter that is why fungi are the best um, we say decom uh, decomposer they they decompose organic matter okay so they are best in uh, recycling micro uh, recycling nutrients in the environment okay so mycosis are fungi related diseases so example for that so mycosis are canning uh, ringworm diba ringworm that's actually uh, fungal infection what else canning uh, candida albicans vaginitis especially sa mga ladies that's actually a form of mycosis so this is related okay kana mga up up mga unsa pa na athlete's foot okay so th that's actually um, mycosis okay so fungi they reproduce either via sexual or asexual means so in asexual means we have this uh, sporangium spores which are formed in sac like structure known as sporangium and of course we have the conidius spores or the conidia and they are not enclosed and the spores are freer compared to those in the sporangium spore okay nga contain okay ang spores sa uh, mga sac like structures on the other hand, there is also the sexual strategy. So, it's a combination of genes from different parents and offspring are more adaptive and higher survival rate. Okay, so take note that in nature, ang katung napagi tendency nga makasurvive ang usaka organism if it is produced by sexual strategies or sexual, it is sexually re, uh, reproduced. Okay, <coughs> sige Let's continue. So, figure 2.18, um, fungal spores as seen in the microscope. That's in your left. Kita na to din ha. Okay, and nasa sa right. So, makita na to din ha. Nga, kanibit ang gipang molds na to nga bread. Since nga asla like capacity nga mo, kanang mo forms like hyphae. Okay, ang kaning mga molds, na anisla, we can, we can just imagine nga kung ni-start nag-mold sa nga mga bread or any food. Ang ilang hyphae anas is ni extend na siya underneath the surface of the food. Okay? Ilalom sa food. That is why, kung makita na gani na ito na ay mold sa nga ito ang, especially lang ito ang bread, uh, please discard it. Okay? Because it will not help nga kung uh, na ay mold sa imuhang bread and then imuha lang itangtangon ang katong part nga na ay molds. It will not actually help because the hyphae is already established underneath the surface din ato makita and at the same time microscopic pag yun siya okay so discard na hang just in case kung naanay molds ang nyohang bread okay 2.19 so that's the basic structure of the conidia take a look at the different conidia shapes so there are interesting shapes uh, kana siya interesting shapes okay so that's fungi and let's go to algae and protis so algae are photosynthetic organisms that's an, unlike sa, sa fungi. Fungi do not uh, photosynthesize. However, there are bacteria that can perform photosynthesis. Nga photosynthetic bacteria. Okay, so algae, photosynthetic organisms. Example for that are seaweeds and kelp. Okay, so algae can occur as unicellular, colonial, or filamentous. And algae produce most of the Earth's oxygen via the planktons kaning phytoplanktons okay so mura bag unfair usahay ba nga nga ang algae maoy nagproduce og daghang kaning oxygen and then ang trees ra ang ato ang gina-educate sa ato ang mga manghod sa atong mga ginikanan sa atong mga non uh, science major ang trees ra ang ato ang i, i credit hatagan og credit okay so i think it's time now nga nga ma mahatag tag credit sa algae okay so algae rarely uh, become infectious to humans okay so dili man sila maka inhabit sa tong skin okay gamay ragyo kayo ang kuan ang tendency for human beings to get sick with algae but when you talk about protists when you talk about uh, fungi and bacteria kana siya di na sila kakumpiyansahan okay 
So, what else? So, causes harmful algal bloom, HAB, or kan gitawag na to red tide. Okay, take note na red tide is actually not not really an accurate term. Okay? Because when you say red tide, kanang red tide, mga mga dinoflagellates mo na sila. Okay? Dinoflagellates mo na sila, mga algae na naghan. Okay? So, nganong dili accurate ang red tide because Red tide is not really red and it has nothing to do with tide or kanang sa pagtaob. Okay, so the more accurate nga term is harmful algal bloom. Managan ang dinoflagellates. Okay, sa isa ka lugar and these dinoflagellates can produce toxins. Nga kung kauno ni siya sa shells, kauno ni siya sa mga fishes, nga i-consume po dahil sa tao, then matransfer ang toxins from Uh, the sea creatures to our body. So, in a, there are instances that these toxins, kung mo-breach na siya sa safety level, then it can cause um, serious nga, nga kaning injury sa panglawas or it can cause death. Okay? So, what else? So, take a look at figure 2.20. So, you can see there the different uh, the diversity of algae in the environment. Okay, so interesting kayo na. So, most of these algae are photosynthetic. Okay, so let's go to protozoa. So, proto, from the word pro, pro that means to say before, and zo, zoa, which means animals. So, they are said to be the first animals. That is why it is no wonder nga, nga protozoans uh, di na siya ni gibelieve sa mga evolutionists nga dinha nag start ang evolutionary process. Okay? So there are approximately 65,000 species and protozoans are single-celled and most species are harmless and the cells are structurally organized or advanced. Okay? So most protozoans but there are many they have na to kumpiyansahan even though uh, most species are harmless pero they have na to kumpiyansahan. Okay, so, protists are heterotrophic. They move via pseudopods, cilia, or flagella. So, uh, sa ilahang uh, mode of locomotion, pwede na ito sila maklasify whether they are uh, amoeboid, kaning amoeboid, kaning na pseudopods from the word amoeba. So, kibaltaon saan pag move sa amoeba. And some are ciliated, mean to say they're movement is via cilia and the other one is flagellated which means ang lang movement is via flagellum okay so you can see there in figure 2.21 uh, the nucleus of uh, kan gitawag na to protozoa the nucleus of protozoa because they are eukaryotes okay so uh, figure 2.22 how amoeba uh, captures its food, bacterial food. Okay, so they move via their pseudopods. Okay, so amoebiasis, they are caused by intamoeba histolytica. Can you see this is one of the most common ami, uh, this is one of the most common uh, disorders or infections caused by protozoa. Okay, so intamoeba histolytica can be obtained from contaminated food and water via the fecal and oral road. Okay, that is why this is very important sa to ang health, ang kanyang gitawag na to proper disposal of our waste, especially human waste or even animal waste. Okay, we should have our uh, proper nga kanibitong kasilyas, okay, dili lang tayong magpataka o kalibang, okay, because it can spread, especially uh, when other people are kanibitong na sila source of water and then dito ka mag-dispose ng mga waste so that's that's very uh, dangerous sa sa health sa society okay so it infects the colon and the liver okay so amoebiasis can also kill okay okay it can cause uh, diarrhea mga god okay it can cause diarrhea so some people gi underestimate ang kanang gitawag nato dehydration so people might die of dehydration uh, when na ay uh, amoebiasis Okay, so figure 2.23, that's how amoebiasis can actually <coughs> infect or damage our, some tissues in our digestive tracts. Okay, so, the, 
So, fecal oral route, mauna nga uh, higikan sa ito ang intestine and then moagi sa itong baba, mauna siya nga mga mauna itong bantayanan. Okay, so other medically significant protozoa, we have the Jarja lamblia, the Jarjasis, Trypanosoma brucei, African sleeping uh, sickness, kada siya. Um, interesting kayo, mingon na ito isa ka student before, ngayon siya nga, nindot din na sir kay Perme ka matulog. Perme ka matulog. Hangtong nga di na ka mumata. That's the African sleeping sickness. Okay, so, uh, na na siya uh, pathophysiology why patients or people infected with trypanosoma, trypanosoma brucei uh, always go to sleep. Okay, what else? The Chagas disease, trypanosoma cruzi, plasmodium falciparum, very common, and, and other species, the plasmodium uh, species, they cause malaria whose vector or the uh, mosquito vector is the are those from the anopheles okay so kaning plasmodium falciparum dili kay nato makita sa city because this uh, protozoa protis are inhabiting the forested parts okay mga forested nga mga regions what else toxoplasma gondii toxoplasmosis okay that's that's via cats Okay, so one of the interesting uh, figures nga protis are those coming from the Georgia Lamblia or siya og tennis racket. Okay, so that's in figure 2.24. Okay, so you can see there the different uh, protist infection. Life cycle of malaria, Africa, tara, sa figure 2.25, in, uh, infection cycle of trypanosomiasis. The African sleeping sickness, you can see there ang iyang pathophysiology and the vector that cheche fly. Okay, we don't have that cheche fly here in the Philippines. In figure 2.26, life cycle of malaria uh, parasite. So, the mal kaning malaria nga protis plus falciparum will infect the blood cells, the red blood cells specifically. Dito sila mang naghan, dito sila musulod. Okay. So, you can see there in your right, kita ni mo katong mga protists that are inhabiting, katong sa top, inhabiting the um, red blood cells and kaning mga mature da yun. Okay, so the helmets, let's go now, the helmets, it literally means worms. So, size range is from 1 millimeter to 25 meters specifically 25 meters yes you are you heard it right 25 meters so 25 meters specifically ang kaning uh, tapeworm okay so eggs and larvae are microscopic so that is why they are included in microbiology so most common groups are flatworms the platyhelminthes the roundworms the nematodes kana sila okay so what else uh, they, ang ilang generalized life cycle is they have the egg, larva, and then adult. So, parasitic helmets will complete its life cycle in definitive host. Okay, so, because na among the stages nga, mubalhin sila og another host. Okay. What else? So, transport. Uh, na, na po in mga intermediate host. So, human beings can can be the intermediate host or they can be the definitive ng mga host okay so source of infection sa helminthic infection contaminated food water soil and of course infected animals so the consumption of kaning mga infected animals pwede na siyang makakos sa helminthic infection particularly kanang mga um, intestinal ng mga parts sa animals okay so kung di na siya matarong o hugas or infected na siya, then pwede na siya nga maka hatag na to o helminthic infection. So, roads of infection, pwede siya fecal oral, or it can be through the penetration of skin. Okay, so in a reproductive cycle, thousands of eggs can be released. So, you can just imagine, ha, isa lang ka reproductive cycle, isa ka worm, nga pwede siyang maka-release o thousands of eggs. And then, Pataka pagkalibang ang ubang mga tao, nga dito pag yun sa sapa mga libang, or near sa source of water, then kana impas ginang society ana. Okay, so mao na nga, 
um, ikuan yun na nato, i-emphasize yun na nato nga dapat sa ni ang atong sanitation dito. Atong sanitation is dapat taas ta og uh, nito tong culture sa sanitation. Okay. So figure 2.30 uh, Take a look at that one nematode or one of the nematodes is ascaris kaning ascariasis. So you can see there din nga kung grabe na yung mga severe cases uh, managhan yun ang worm i-block niya i-block niya ang imuhang food sa imuhang intestine kay tungo sa kadaghan. Okay? So makita nito sa right, di ba? Makita nito sa right nga through surgical removal. So the tendency here nga kung mukha o naka instead nga i-absorb niya sa intestine dito na sa mga worms ang mga nutrients nga imong gikaon. So this can cause malnutrition in people infected with with worms. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to viruses. So what are viruses? The name virus was posed by Louis Pasteur. So it means poison and they are known to infect every cell type including bacteria. Okay, na ay mga viruses nga may infect or may infect o bacteria. So, closer to infectious molecules than they are to microbes. Okay, so they, they said that by, uh, viruses is the entity between the living and the non-living. Okay, because they lack, nga nung non-living man siya, because they lack the characteristics that can consider an organism, an organism. Okay, so take note nga, dili sila ka-reproduce by their own. Uh, they really do not uh, respond to stimulus. They do not uh, metabolize. Kana siya. Those are <coughs> some of the factors because ang organism, ang isa ka-living organism, must satisfy or complete all the characteristics of living organisms. But viruses, daghang kayo sila og kanang lacking. Okay, so mao nag nga, they are closer to infectious molecules than they are to microbes. Now, take note hang, nga, there are molecules that are infectious, not only katang mga bacteria, mga protis, okay? So, viruses are, is one of the example. The other one are the prions, kana siya, infectious protein. Okay, what else? So, you, uh, viruses, even though that they are most likely molecule, mo, composition, uh, molecules lang sila, okay? They can direct synthesis within living cells. Pwede na sila nga mag uh, kanabitaw mo control sa kanagitawag na itong uh, process sa cell. Ilang i-hijack. Okay? Ilang i-hijack ang, ang cell. So, some viral genetic sequences were traced in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic genomes. So, since ang viruses mga god is made up of protein and genetic material, ang kanilang genetic material, once nga ilahan nang i-inject sa cell, is pwede siya nga mo-integrate siya sa um, genetic material sa genome sa host cell. Okay? So, some viral genetics were traced in both. Okay, man, itong iba sa ganyan. So, classified as obligate intracellular parasites. So, yun say obligate intracellular parasites, for them to reproduce, they need to infect cells. Okay? Again, for them to reproduce, they need to infect cells. So, most are smaller than bacteria. Okay, so you can see there in 2.31, the comparative sizes of different cells. And, of course, you have there the viruses, which falls way, be, uh, way below the 1 micrometer in a scale. So, gamay na kaayo. So, viruses are actually 100 times smaller than a eukaryotic cell. So, hinan is like gagmay. <coughs> So, viral component, you can see there, you know, viruses <coughs> can be classified as enveloped or naked. So, when you say naked viruses, uh, there are only two main composition or component. You have the capsid, which is made up of protein, and you have the nucleic acid, or it's either DNA or RNA. Okay, however, there are those enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses, nga aside sa capsid o sa nucleic acid, napagin na sila extra nga membrane. And this membrane is similar to the phospholipid bilayer of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Again, kaning membrane nga nakahimo sa enveloped viruses are structurally similar to prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell membrane. Okay, kaya natay madiscussan na na later on sa infection. 
Okay, so there are also different uh, shapes and sizes so viruses. So, naiwa ka itong uh, Murag satellite. Kaling mga T4 bacteriophage. Take a look at that one in figure 2.33. Kanang yellow. Kanang complex. Murag siya satellite. Okay, so mga tinood bagay na. Yes, it's actually true. You can see it in the far right. Okay, sa kanang uh, electron microscopic images. Okay, so kana siya. So, dagang siya shape. Okay, so, uh, by the way, back sa 2.32, figure 2.32, uh, coronaviruses are actually enveloped viruses. Okay, so, 2.34, the Tobacco mosaic virus was the first virus to be described. Okay, makita na ito iyang shape. Nga mura siya o, I don't know, kung nakatilaw mo ng lumpia, kanang lumpia, nga tagpiso, gito. Oh, kanang yellow, paborito na nako sa una, karon wala na ako kita na. Okay, so more siya stick. Okay, so that's the tobacco mosaic virus, the first to be described. It's actually famous. This is actually one of the famous viruses that we have. Okay, ah, so other viral contents, the polymerases, it synthesizes DNA and RNA. And of course, we have the reverse transcriptase, which synthesizes DNA from RNA. Okay, reverse transcriptase. So reverse transcriptase. Uh, in light sa to ang uh, pandemic karon na uh, you have noticed that the machine used to detect viruses in uh, samples are RT-PCR so RT-PCR is the reverse transcriptase uh, polymerase chain reaction okay so ang mahitabuan na niya kay uh, RNA siya RNA siya so aron himo siyang DNA is i-reverse ang cycle take note ha nga na ang RNA is na as uh, contemporary na DNA. Okay? So, siya sa genetics na siya nga part. Okay, so how do viruses infect cells? You have there in figure 2.35. First is the adsorption. Take note that this is AD. It's not absorption. It's not AB absorption. Okay? So, it's adsorption. Meaning to say, it binds. It, it, the, the viral particle... Okay, dili siya mo entirely entered to the cell. Okay, so it's it binds uh, to the binding of viruses to a specific molecule on host cell. Okay, so the second one here is the penetration in which the genome, take note that the, that the uh, main uh, objective of viruses is to inject its genetic material into the host cell. Again, Maogyonai, main objective of these viruses are to inject its genome into the host cell. Okay, so that's penetration. And coating the viral nucleic acid is released from the capsid. Okay, and then synthesis, viral components are produced. Gihijack na nila. Okay, take note ha, yung nga katotong gimension a while ago, that viruses cannot reproduce by themselves. That's why they need to infect. They are considered as obligate intracellular parasite. Okay, intracellular, obligate intracellular parasite. Aaron, uh, they will try to utilize the machineries of the host cell for the host cell to make copies of the viruses. So they will use the machineries all the materials all the molecules that they can find in a in a host cell and then they will form from from one viral particle to hundreds or thousands of different new, new viral particles so that's assembly um, the next is um, release so once that these uh, viruses uh, can form or ma form na totally form then they will mature then they will now then be released from the host cell. Okay? So, mauto nga, ang isa ka, ang isa ka, kanding gitawag na to, nga viral particle, can produce hundreds or thousands. That is why, nga, kanibitang sa post sa social media, it went viral. Okay? Viral siya because pas-pas ka iya hang pagkahimo and then dali ka siya nga, nga na-share or dali ka siya nga na, na naghan. Okay, so that's yeah. So that's in Figure two point thirty five. Now there are also viruses that can alter the uh, cells DNA and can ca cause cancer, and they are known as oncoviruses. Okay, so makakos sila og uh, 
cancer kay some can successfully integrate ang ilang viral genome into the host genome so that's actually a form of mutation kay ilang gi-alter ang ang kaning gitawag nato nga sequence sa host genome kay example for uh, viruses that can cause um, cancers are the human papilloma virus the HPV Okay, so on some ng HPV, kanang mga kalungko, human papilloma virus. Mabito ng ladies, katong mga, mga ladies with uh, katong na ay mga genital warts are actually advised to get um, cervical cancer vaccine. Kaya na may vaccine sa cervical cancer. Okay, so in anan siya. So, they can cause um, cancers. What, what else? The herpes virus can cause lymphoma lymphoma and of course the hepatitis B virus or it can cause a liver cancer okay in 2.36 so an illustration of how a human papilloma virus can cause cancer so when you reach sa nyohang cell and molecular biology then you can understand better uh, the oncoviruses okay so bacteriophage these are now um Bac uh, these are now viruses that can infect uh, bacteria or in short they can be called phages okay so there are temperate phages have the ability to suspend viral replication inside the cell so for phage stays, uh, stage take a look at uh, figure 2.37 especially in your left okay so can I see a uh, um, microscope uh, electron microscopy so the infect nila mga satellite and then they inject their genome into the into the into a bacterial cell and then inside the bacterial cell new viruses are being developed okay so viral infections um, can either be lytic or lysogenic so when you say lytic infection these are viral infections that will result to cellular lysis or meaning to say it can burst, literally burst, pabuto nila ang cell. After manggawa sila, pabuto ang cell. That's lytic. On the other hand, we also have this lysogenic. Okay? Lysogenic infection is the integration of viral genome in the host genome and subsequently pass to succeeding generation. So, di nila pabuto, however, um, ilahang ma, na, ma integrate ang viral genome into the host genome. And then, katunang mga man, na change na, katunang nanay viral genome it can be passed on to the next generation so you can see there the illustration between lytic and isogenic cycle in figure 2.38 now we also have caning phage therapy so this is the use of viruses to deliver drugs into specific cells and they are more accurate than the conventional drug therapy now take note that viruses are um uh, mga viruses most viruses are species specific when mean you say a species specific is that they will only infect one particular nga species okay Kaninge. so mean to say human beings have specific set of viruses for human beings and there are also viruses only for dogs there are only viruses only for cats so on and so forth so that's species uh, species specific and at the same time Viruses are also cell specific. When you say cell specific, that means to say it will only infect one type of cell in the body. Okay? So, can I say cell specific? So, aside from being species specific, it is also cell specific. So, there are approximately 200 different cell types in our body. However, it can only infect one. Siguro, daghanaki ng two. Uh, cell types in our body. So, delete niya infect ang entire cellular type. Now, remember that viruses are also capable of mutating. Okay? So, even though nga, nga uh, species-specific siya, but once they mutate, they might be able to infect another species. Okay? That's what happened with sa kanigitaw na itong uh, COVID sa, or in COVID, the novel coronavirus. Okay? So, instead nga sa bats to sila, people consume the bats, and then the viruses in the bats mutated to infect humans. That is why humans to humans na dayong an infection. Mang gitaw sa novel coronavirus. So, the mutation inside a viral, uh, inside a virus, <coughs> okay, can either cause for the formation of a new strain or a new virus. 
Okay? Kaya siya. So, hinaan siya. That is why, it is important for us nga, kaya ito, we consider what we consume. Okay? We have to respect now the balance of nature. So, eating or consuming exotic, labi ng mga exotic or mga wild ng mga animals, maano siya nga, it can cause uh, <clears throat> new viral infections. So, if human beings, ang fatong society, will not stop in consuming wild animals, then we expect more pandemics in the future kung hindi ito mo stop sa pag-consume sa wild ng mga animals. Okay. So, I hope we, we understand now ang anong hinana. Okay. However, there are also viruses nga pwede siya one or two species ang pwede niyong ma-infect pero gamay ragi kayo na siya nga percentage. So, most viruses, again ha, i-reiterate ko na, most viruses are actually species specific. Okay. So, last year, there is a polio outbreak. So, mga na polio, uh, contagious na siya, it is actually attacking the nervous system. Okay. So, pwede niyong i-cripple ang nervous system that supplies information sa parts sa ito ang body, especially the skeletal muscle. So, once nga this nerve that controls the skeletal muscle is infected with polio virus, then there are no more coordination with this skeletal muscle sa imong spine. Therefore, your skeletal muscle can no longer move. And as a result, uh, mugamay ang imong skeletal muscle. Okay? So, hinaanaan siya. So, uh, sa itong mga rivers, so fecal oral ragihapon siya ang iyang mode of transmission. So, mao lagi na nga mao ni nga importante ka ayo nga nga nindot ang ato ang bitang pagcontain sa human waste di ta magpataka og uh, pag apod-apod sa ato ang hugaw especially ato ipaana sa river okay so what else so figure 2.40 the transmission of the 2019 coronavirus mao to ato gimension ganiha so daghang kaayo siya ang pwedeng makuanan okay so, mana nga, since we are still in the pandemic, then it is very much important nga, even though nga nanata sa most of our uh, cities and municipalities are now in the modified general community quarantine, remember that the virus is still there. Okay? So, if we will put down our guards, meaning to say makumpiansa ta, then we can, it's, it will not be a surprise if masaka na po ang cases. Okay, so let us help our government, let us help our uh, uh, medical agencies, mga health agencies. Kay gipang kapoy na po siya, then let's, let's take our part. Okay, so sanitize, disinfect, social distancing, kana siya. Okay, so I hope you have now some additional inputs sa to ang uh, coronavirus nga pandemic karon. Okay, so before I end, uh, please check yourself whether you can describe the major differences of different microbial groups. And you can describe the mechanisms of microbial reproduction, if you can identify positive impacts of microbes to society. And of course, identify the potential threats of microbes to society. Okay, so that ends our discussion for topic number two. Okay, so this is microbiology. Topic 2, The Microbes. Again, this is Edward Lawrence Opena, your course instructor. And thank you very much and see you next topic. Okay? So, God bless us all.